this video, we're going to look at three important ratios and how they affect your ability to get a mortgage. So the LTV or loan to value is a simple ratio that describes the loan amount divided by the sales price as a percentage. I.e. if we have a sales price of $250,000 and a loan amount of $200,000, we would have $200,000 divided $250,000, which gives us a loan to value of 80%. Any conventional loan that has a loan to value higher than 80% would require mortgage insurance. Therefore, we recommend, and it's always a good idea to have 20% down. Now, if you're buying a house and you already own a house uh, and you're selling that house, the 20% is not that difficult to come by. But if you're a first time buyer, that 20% might be difficult. And so we can talk to you about what you might be able to do to offset that or what the impact of mortgage insurance might be. The next ratio is the housing ratio. This is the monthly cost of your mortgage divided by your monthly gross income. The cost of the mortgage includes any escrow payment for taxes and insurance. Your mortgage payment is made up of principal, interest, property taxes and homeowners insurance. We refer to this payment as PITI. You can see that in another video. I.e., if we had a PITI of $1,300 and a gross monthly income of $15,000, we would have a $1,300 divided by $15,000, which equals 8.7% housing ratio or the front end ratio. Ideally, your front end ratio is less than 28%. So you can see in this particular example, we have a lot of margin. Finally, the DTI or debt to income ratio is the monthly cost of your mortgage plus any other recurring debts divided by your monthly gross income. So in this case, if we had a PITI of $1,300 and let's say a car payment of $750, and a gross monthly income of $15,000, we'd have $1,300, the PITI, plus $750, the car loan, divided by $15,000, which would give us a 13.7 DTI, or the back-end ratio. Ideally, your back-end ratio is less than 36%. So again, with this $15,000 of income, we're in great shape. Of course, your mileage may vary. So let's look at the simple calculation for loan to value. So we'll come up with a purchase price. We can put in the numbers that we had before. So $250,000 and a loan amount of $200,000. And we can see our loan to value, which is simply this divided by this, uh, shown as a percentage, is 80%. So now let's put in some more realistic numbers that maybe you're looking at, 325,000. And let's say we've only got a down payment of 10,000. Let's do a down payment of 10,000. So we'll go 315,000. So now I've put 10,000 down. My loan to value is 96%. So we might struggle to actually get a loan with that high loan to value. And so of course, the higher the price of the property, the more total amount you can expect to put down. And we can actually express this with a down payment. So if we want to do that, we can, we can add a line here. And we can say, what's our down payment? And let's say we put our down payment in as 10,000. And so this would now be this minus the down payment, so it's the purchase price minus the down payment, gives us our total loan amount. So if I now increase my down payment to let's say 30,000, and you'll see the difference there. So you can set up your own calculator so you can work on what do you need to have. You could also set it up so that it would calculate your down payment based on this loan to value being 80%, you could see what your down payment would have to be. And to do that would be fairly simple. If we make this one just 80%, and then we say, um, what would 
this number need to be to, to make this number um, the loan amount. So then the down payment would have to equal this amount times 100% minus the 80%. And that will give us what our down payment needs to be for the loan to value to be 80%. So if I change this to 90%, you'll see it all changes. So I would only need to bring 32,000, but if I want it to be 80%, I got to bring $65,000 as a down payment to have a loan amount of 260,000. So you can see simple calculation, you can check your loan to value. So for the housing ratio, the PITI, which in this case we're saying is $1,300. So remember that's principal, interest, taxes, and insurance adds up to 1,300. My gross income is $15,000. My housing ratio would be 8.67. Now, if we go back down to, let's say I only had $6,000 of income, I have a 21.67. Now remember we wanna be below 28%, so we're still in great shape there. And this is a very simple calculation. Again, it's this value, the PITI, divided by the gross income expressed as a percentage. And finally then, our debt to income, the DTI, is the PITI, the principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, which in this case we're saying is $1,300. Now remember, we have another video that shows you how to calculate that. Other recurring debts, so in this case we said it was a car payment of $750 a month. So now we have $1,300 of PITI, $750 of the car loan, and then our gross income is $15,000. So in this case, our percentage is this amount plus this amount divided by this amount. So when we do that, we have 13.67 as a DTI. Now, again, if I change this to that $6,000, remember we were looking at $6,000, we'd have a 34.17%, and the amount that we want to stay below is 38%, so we'd still be in great shape. Again, very simple calculation, very easy for you to uh, calculate on your own. So that covers the three most important ratios that you'll need to know about when you're getting your mortgage. You will hear of those, and you will see them expressed as percentages. So if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. We've got loads more videos coming and we'd really appreciate your subscription. Thanks.